G'day folks. What you're about to see is the aftermath of the, well, forcible entry into a scrap ATM safe box or strong box, the cash compartment. Um, a friend of mine bought six of these on greys, just like that. They're about eight or nine dollars each. And, uh, well, being a bit eccentric like me, he thought it'd be a good idea. Of course, they weigh about 450 kilos and he accidentally locked one of the safe boxes playing around with it. So he basically gave it to me. I didn't get the computer top part of that one, but I've also done an equipment trade and scored a complete unit. Now, we're going to have to cut the main loom on it when I get it, so I can't uh, power it up, but we'll have a play around with it and do a full autopsy on it. The exact model is this one, 5877. There are thousands of them out there. So, uh, yeah, this is an uh, educational demo, I guess you call it, just a look inside and an autopsy, not a uh, video on how to break into an ATM. I'm only showing you after uh, cutting through the safe walls and actually opening the thing. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It took quite a while to do it. You wouldn't get away with it if you tried to uh, actually break into an ATM because they have so many sensors to pick up intrusion and notify the authorities. It is not funny. That and they're bolted to the floor. So don't even try and rip them out. Uh, yeah, this is probably one of the more controversial technical videos that I'm going to be doing, but Again, the technical manuals for these things are all over the internet. It's not hard to see how they're constructed, and I actually consulted one before I decided to cut the safe open, and it made it much easier because I knew exactly where to cut. <laughs> so they published the manuals online. Anyway, enjoy and uh, stay safe. These things are heavy. If somebody wants to offer you one, just be prepared to move something that weighs three, 400 kilos and do it properly because if it falls on you, it will kill you. G'day folks, welcome to this afternoon's little equipment autopsy. As you can see here, I've got a rather heavy piece of equipment. Uh, this is the strong box from an automatic teller machine, ATM, or automated teller machine as they call them in some countries. Uh, this is one of six that a friend bought off Grays online. Uh, they were decommissioned not long ago. The company, I think the company just puts them on there just to get rid of them because they sold for about nine dollars each. He bought six of them at nine bucks each and probably paid about thirty bucks each to get them uh, for the truck rental to get them home. I don't think he realized how heavy they were but he's a bit eccentric like me. <laughs> so uh, yeah big thanks to my uh, anonymous friend for uh, donating this and I have yet to pick up a complete one that was not locked. This one was locked and as you can see I've had to cut away the door jam to get it open. Uh, that took a while uh, these aren't really a true safe, they don't have pins going in all directions and they're not all that heavily built. They're more of a strong box and they're to delay any kind of intrusion until the authorities get there. Like it's, it's lined with concrete and fire retardant and it's pretty well built. But it took me about an hour to get in. So if by that time the authorities haven't arrived, they are very lazy. Because <laughs> it has seismic sensors, there's door sensors. Obviously it's always connected, so if the ATM goes offline and an alarm goes off, like if they cut the cables and unplug it, an alarm will go off. If they tip it, it'll go off. If they subject it to any serious amount of shock, there's a seismic sensor. There's all kinds of sensors in these things, so you're basically screwed right from the start. Not many ATM heists go to plan and, well, work out. I've just noticed something. Whatever that was connected to is long gone. And that was the door locks, the electronic lock. So yeah, they decommissioned these things good. They wanted them. They wanted them to be scrap. Yeah, whatever that was, probably lived up in here. Remote ca alarms cards gone. Um, the remote status card inputs and things, ports. I see a lot of loose connectors and only one board down there. So it looks like it's been gutted. Cassettes are gone. I've got one cassette which came out of this. There was one left. I think he might have had more, but gave him away. But he gave me the uh, $50 bill one. I believe it held... Uh, normal capacity would be about 20 grand worth of $50 bills. Since there's four slots, I imagine there's two of 20s and two of 50s. So there'd be $40,000 in there and probably 15 grand in $20 bills. So they do fill them with a fair bit of cash. 
but again, you've got bolt holes in the bottom. There should be four of them. Yeah, there's two more up the back, so before they load all this equipment in, site prep goes through and they chem set 20 millimeter diameter, very long threaded studs into the floor deep and then bolt them down tight. So if you try and yank one of these off the ground with your 4x4 or something, be prepared for a shock. It will tear the chassis out of your vehicle. Uh, the guy who I spoke to used to install and service ATMs. Uh, he said he saw an incident where someone tried to wrap a chain around or a cable. It was a tow truck, a flatbed tilt tray. It ripped the entire tray and hydraulic ram and everything off the back of the truck. So the guy just kept driving and got out of there. I don't know if they caught him or not, but yeah, they came there, came to the uh, scene of the crime and just saw this tilt tray tray still chained or cabled to an ATM which hadn't moved an inch because they sink big studs through the ground. There's one of the washers from, still from when it was installed. But yeah, Grays Online, I think they had about 10 of these or five of these and five newer ones going for about $8 each just a week ago. But they are heavy. This thing weighs about 300 kilograms. Uh, be prepared for some heavy moving if you want to buy them. And you're generally required to take all of them, not just one. So you buy, you buy the auction, you buy the lot. Now this thing has some fascinating gear in it. This all slides out on rails. I'm going to pull this out and get it on the bench and we'll have a closer look at it. But yeah, this is just in, intended to be a uh, educational teardown. There are technical manuals on these. I bought a PDF document, I think it was about $8 to download it, showing me the components inside here just so I knew where to cut to get the door open. Because I was expecting it to have pins through the top or the bottom, the top, which it can't because the dispenser's there, it maybe may have had one there. I was expecting a lot more to lock this thing up, but it's only the bars on the front side. So that's all I have to cut out. Although this part here engages in there, so if you cut the hinges off, uh, you're still not going to be able to get the door open. Looking at the way that's designed, that's probably the hardest way to get it open. Because it goes all the way to the bottom, whereas this here is just four three bars that slide out and engage the side of the frame so yeah again it's a safe it's a strong box not a safe it's designed to uh, keep you there long enough for the authorities to show up and uh, slap the cuffs on <laughs> so don't get any ideas yeah look at that conveying mechanism, the vacuum system for picking up the notes, the little red things are vacuum suction cups. Very neat stuff. This is going to be fun. Oh, and well, I am getting the top half of one to go with it, so we'll be able to have a look at the display unit, the printer, all the electronics, the little embedded computer that runs Windows XP. Beautiful. But yeah, one heavy bit of equipment. It's three, three, probably 300 kilos empty just for the safe box. I'd say about 340, 350 full. Be prepared for lifting. I had to take the engine crane and even then it was struggling. We tried lifting with this stuff first and it lifted it just fine, but I wasn't happy with it, so we went with chains. It was, uh, it was an interesting move. Oh, this is made by NCR, by the way. All right, I've got the dispensing mechanism out. We'll have a closer look at that in a separate video. For now, this is just the safe box video. There's a nice rail system there. They might even be long enough to make server rails with. Very cool. That'll just unscrew and then slide forward because those pins have a, uh, a slot in them. Uh, as far as the loom goes, there's various 240 volt points. Decent quality wiring, I like that much. Yeah, very good. I'll keep the wiring. Let's pull all this out. Basically, I'm just going to gut it and we'll have a look at the locking system in here. Uh, there's no sign of anything that could relock, so there's obviously no glass relocker. Uh, proper safes often have a glass relocker where if you smash parts of it, it'll actually slam the uh, bolts into place permanently. Although I can see something clear through there. What are you? We'll find out when I pull it apart. That'll be interesting. Power down. 
<laughs> AC plug. There's even a, there's a socket in the, in the IAC lead. I'm guessing you got to stick your hand through there and push it into the power supply. That's how you plug them in. It'll have a right angle plug like that and yeah, you just got to reach up inside through that little slot in the back and plug the thing in. That's the main power supply. So I'll get all this out and have a look. It doesn't look like there was a card there because I realise there's no uh, there's no rub marks from the screws. If those had been screwed into, there'd be little circular abrasions on the zinc coating. Uh, they're not there. So whatever this connected to is either on these nut certs here or somewhere else, but it's gone. So whatever the locks were controlled by is completely gone. That's probably how they decommissioned them. But the lock itself is still on the front there. Yeah, interesting. That is glass. There is a glass relocker in here. I don't think it can actually slam any additional bolts home. But, yeah, there's nowhere else for it to put in additional locks, but it would probably permanently lock if you broke that glass plate. Huh. It does have one. Well, I'll probably be wrong. Let's open it up first before I say that. I'll gut this, get that out. Then we'll have a look at the door. Awesome. Totally awesome. Can't wait to get the complete one. Oh yeah, that little thing on the side that was up there. Earth clamp assembly. It's got brass P clamps, standoff screws, nuts for them, and a plastic blanking plate for something. A square blanking plate. Pretty cool. Alright, well, I've got the door housing off. Uh, it wasn't locked. They did, there is a small key lock on there, but nothing was locked. And you can see somebody's already gone to town in here. Knowing who I got it off, it was not him. He has no interest in the electronic side of him. He just bought him because it'd be good in his little bar area. Uh, obviously, whoever had these before, I think it was Bendigo Bank or Commonwealth Bank, uh, decommissioned them properly. They've taken their proprietary equipment. Whatever was down here is gone. There would have been a probably some kind of linear slide or some kind of uh, indicator to tell them that the lock is engaged. That's all gone. That was what's blanking the other side of that hole. New modern Australian clipsal conduit and clips, so it's been modified after the fact and probably fitted with a bunch of new equipment that's all gone. Yeah, they've severed mo and it does look like it goes to this terminal strip, but Again, whatever that was is gone. That, yeah, it's a mess. That's just how I found it. They've taken any proprietary equipment that was stuck or screwed in here, like up there. All that's completely gone. So I can't show you what that is, but there's the door lock. It's pretty hefty. It takes a bit of effort to get these open. But of course, as I said before, they rely on high tech to defend them rather than brute force or brute strength. So you're better off using uh, sensors and GPS tracking and all that sort of stuff to deal with your uh, ATM intrusion or theft issues rather than having a massive safe that weighs over a tonne. Remember, these things are actually a portable ATM. They just bolt them to the floor where they're required and Bob's your uncle, you've got yourself an ATM. So, yeah, they're not an in-wall type. But I've got nice terminal strips, it's got some resistors on it. Keep that. I'll try and remove the door locks. As my uh, supervisor or my manager, Terry, uh, he's got the top half of this unit and he's going to put it in his little outdoor hangout area and convert it into a jukebox. We'll take the old CRT monitor out and the old embedded PC out and put a modern, like an, one of those little pizza box IBMs that I've got. I'll give him one of those and an LCD screen and turn it into a little uh, hangout jukebox with on top of a bar fridge. He's getting a bar fridge the same size as this safe. He's going to sit the top on it, paint it the same colour and I think if I can get these off intact I'll give him the uh, front door knob and the combination lock and he can just stick that on the front of the um, bar fridge and actually make it look like an ATM with a safe box. Kind of cool. It's just a little retro slash so, steampunk, cyberpunk kind of funny thing. You know, we're all mad. We work together, so we've got to be mad. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a cool little project for him. 
if you can paint it the same colour and make it actually look like the ATM, because there is a cosmetic door that came off the front of this. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Now there's a little tool in there too. It says, do not extend bolt when removing or mounting the lock cover assembly. And it shows this little key going into a hole inside this. So this little uh, sheet metal key obviously has to come off and be inserted to lock it out before fitting the thing in there. Although it doesn't look like it's ever been used. And you can see the brass bolts extended. It's blocking that, that big wheel there. So as long as that's blocked, you cannot open it. If I were to remove this, this should rotate and this should retract. But yeah, there's no relocker or anything. The shiny part that I saw was this sticker and a reflection of the hole that was in there. Um, yeah, I just saw the shiny silver part and assumed that it was actually glass. Dummy. Yeah, no relockers, no nothing. This is low tech security, dependent on high tech um, tracking and intrusion detection, like early warning systems. That's what they rely on, not this, not, not brute force. All right, so this is what I got off the front of the machine. That's the cash dispenser LED strip that sits in there. Nothing too special. That's the main lock control knob and shaft. Terminal strip and the lock. Well, I kind of demolished it taking it apart. And I'll be a bit more gentle with the next one now that I know how it works. I managed to break the flat flex ribbon that goes through the guts of it. But overall it's actually pretty good. Where did I put the rest of it? No, where did it go? There's a piece of flat flex somewhere, but either way, the main control knob passes through to the body. Something there, I'm guessing it's a... Uh, what would you call that? Looks like a solenoid that or it's some kind of encoder but again I think there's an encoder in there or a stepping motor yeah no, that's a stepping motor and that's its little controller that was on the end of that that hung down there it's like another part of the locking system and a weight to help pull that down when it engages yeah that's part of the uh, part of the locking mechanism, the manual side of it, the digital side of it, well it's got one of those little key fob pass card readers, it's like an ultrasonic kind of reader or a, um, I don't know what you'd call that, I used to use it for login at one of my old jobs, a foundry, they got this brand new login machine, it wasn't a clock card machine, it was actually a login type thing, you just tap your little key fob against the side of it and it would log you in. That's exactly what that is. But yeah, that's got the LCD on it. I'm going to give this to um, Terry and uh, he can stick that to the front of his bar fridge as the, uh, the fake safe. I'll cut the shaft of this off, push it through there and actually glue the whole lot together and you can stick it to the front of it so you can put the top of the ATM on it, paint it the same colour and make it look like the real deal. I'll also give him this. If we cut that off mostly flush or even sh leave a bit of shaft on it and uh, drill a hole in the front of the fridge and actually stick it in there to look, look the real deal. Make a pseudo ATM slash bar fridge slash jukebox. That's really neat, I should try that myself. Oh there's the rest of the flat flex. It's got a little pass through and I yanked it and broke it off. But yeah that's the lock. Bit of a shame but I don't have the rest of the system they removed it all whatever connected to that was gone whatever connected to that was gone and whatever connected to those other wires like the seismic and anti tamper sensors are all gone and so was the controller so yeah not much else to see on this apart from a useless locking mechanism which will probably end up as scrap metal what was it it was KABA MAS Corporation, Lexington, Kentucky, USA. 
serial number S. Yeah, big serial number. Electronic S2000 high security electronic lock type 1. Uh, Sencon systems. Burglary resistant electronic combination lock. Okay. Neat bit of kit. It's a shame I've butchered it getting it out. Uh, there will be another one. I am, as I said before, I'm getting another machine which is completely intact and the safe box or the, lock, the strong box is still unlocked because my friend hasn't messed around with it and he knows now not to twiddle the combinations and then slam the bolt in. Because what he did was he was playing around with this and decided to turn the main knob and of course the bloody lock slammed shut and didn't unlock because all the wires were cut, you couldn't even power it up, you couldn't do anything. Uh, so that's basically what happened to this particular um, strong box. It was accidentally locked and that was it. It didn't want to work again. So, yeah, that's interesting. At least I was able to get it all out. Everything is dependent on being able to dismantle the back of the machine. You generally won't get anywhere if you're just trying to dismantle the front of it. Still have no idea what that key was supposed to do, but... <laughs> I guess that explains why I lost so many small parts when I took it apart. Yeah, there's probably a specific timing position for this as well. You can't just put it on in any position. Anyway, that's about all for the mechanical side of it, the strong box side of it. That does move now. <laughs> so yeah, that's that part disassembled. I'll get this off to the scrapyard and then pick up the other complete machine. And in the meantime, probably before you see the complete working machine, uh, I'll tear apart the internals of this thing. The power supply is pretty beefy. There's certainly a lot of gear in there. But for now, this is just a finishing off video. Let's get rid of the rest of this carcass. Just chuck it out, get rid of it. And uh, we'll move on to the examining the internals. And then when I get time, I'll go and pick up a complete one and hopefully even be able to power it up. Although I've got a feeling uh, there's no easy way of disconnecting the main loom from inside the computer box on top. I might have to cut it, and if that, that's the case, I won't actually be able to power it all up properly. A bit of a shame, but we'll see how we go. Mind you, considering how they've decommissioned them, I don't expect them to work anyway. They've probably also wiped or removed the hard drive from the embedded system on, on the top of the computer unit. So, yeah, I, I don't expect these to work at all. But they're a novelty item, they're a fun little thing to toy around with. I might even salvage that bit of steel plate, I'd be willing to bet that, well, given the rest of the system is made out of mild steel, I doubt that that's actually hardened steel, that's probably just regular mild steel as well. It's the strongest part of the system, but not that hard to defeat if you know where to cut. <laughs> Still took a while, again, this is an educational and entertainment video only. This isn't intended to show you how to break into one of these. You're basically stupid if you try it on a uh, active working and filled ATM. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you like these things, keep an eye on Gray's Auctions and eBay. They do show up from time to time and they are dirt cheap. You just have to be prepared to move something big and heavy. Uh, be safe about it. They are extremely heavy. Use proper sturdy trailer, sturdy engine crane or a forklift or something like that. Yeah, just be careful with them because very heavy objects have a habit of falling on people and killing them. It's not a good thing. So yeah, stay safe, have fun and enjoy. Wait for the next video. <laughs>